Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I am going to be doing my January reading wrap up part two. If you missed it, I did a January reading wrap up earlier this month because I have been reading a pretty decent amount for me. Like I feel like more than one book a week is really successful for me. And so in the first half of the month, I read four books. Uh, they were books that I really enjoyed and I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. In the second half of the month, I read three more books. And so again, for me, very successful. I'm very happy with it. And they were books that I mostly enjoyed. So yeah, let's just jump into it. The last book that I read in the month of January, but I'm going to talk about it first, is Good Talk by Mira Jacob. The reason why I'm bringing this one up first is because I already did a full review on this book. This was a five-star book for me. I absolutely loved it. I loved every second I spent with this book. It hit a lot of things that I really, really enjoyed. If you want my full thoughts on it, definitely go check out that review video. I'll have it linked up above. This is a graphic memoir and Mira Jacob is talking about a lot of things in regards to identity and talking about things like race in America. She herself is Indian American. She married a man who is a white Jewish man and they had a biracial child and so grappling with the complexities of identity in the United States is a lot and especially with recent events and things like that it caused Mira Jacob to have a lot of questions and cause her to do a lot of reflecting that she hasn't done before and I just loved everything about this graphic memoir. For some reason you're on the fence about this one just go ahead and pick it up. I have a feeling you'll enjoy it to some extent. Another book that I just completely adored was These Precious Days by Ann Patchett. This is a collection of essays that Ann Patchett wrote over the past couple of years and published I think in December of 2021. Ann Patchett is an author that I really enjoy. I've read most of the things that she's written at this point. I believe that this is her second collection of essays. I went into this book not really knowing what to expect but I honestly enjoyed every second I spent with this book. She explores a lot of different things through this collection of essays. She talks about her childhood, becoming a writer, her experiences at the Iowa, Iowa like writing workshop and things like that and being sort of like an assistant there and the different dynamics. She talks about her three dads. That's like a specific essay that I really enjoyed a lot because it's a very, you know, unique experience for her. Her experiences in her married life and especially like the fact that she got married to her current husband when she was older, not having children. She talks about her relationship to her faith and different like priests and nuns that she knows. There's a lot in here about family. She reflects on the situations that we've been through through over the past couple of years. She talks about being a bookshop owner and her experience getting exposed to children's literature through that. She even went on her own like no buy year which I thought was like kind of an amazing essay to be reading in January after deciding to do my own no buy year. Like it was such a weird experience picking up this essay collection because it made me realize that I have a lot of like thoughts and ideas in common with Ann Pacha which is not a thing I thought about. Maybe that makes sense because I like so much of her work but she has a wonderful way with words. Her essays are full of like emotions in the best possible way like you can feel the love that she has for the people in her life. She talks about grief and grieving uh, different people who have passed away in her life. She talks about art and writing and books and it's so good and I won't talk too much about the title essay but it is so beautiful and so moving. It starts in one place and then by the end of it you're in a completely different but wonderful place. It's so well done. Like Ann Patchett is such a good writer and you can definitely tell like or at least I feel like I can tell with each passing book that she comes out with I feel like you can feel her writing getting stronger which is such a wonderful thing to say too especially considering that Ann Patchett's like almost 60 years old and still like publishing novels and things like that which like obviously isn't crazy unheard of but I feel like there's a lot of emphasis obviously in our western culture. People who are younger and newer you know 30 under 30 lists and all this stuff and like watching someone like Ann Patchett who has published books pretty consistently and had varying degrees of success seeing her writing sort of get stronger and better with each book is honestly for me such a delight. So yeah if you're someone who really enjoys essay collections I highly recommend picking this one up. I think a lot if not most of these essays were published in other capacities like in New Yorker or New York Times or Harper's or something along those lines but I hadn't read any of them before and so unless you're someone who is just like on top of everything that Ann Patchett is publishing which 
I'm sure there are people like that out there. You probably haven't read these essays before and I just found them to be so heartwarming and delightful. Yeah, this was another book that was basically like a four and a half, five star read for me. Like every single experience in this with this essay collection was just so delightful. Like I can't wait to reread it, honestly. All right, and the final book that I have to talk about in this video is The Prince of Mournful Thoughts and Other Stories by Carolyn Kim. This is a collection of short stories. This was like a really interesting experience for me because I basically went into this completely blind. I have never heard of this book before. never heard anyone talking about this book before. I saw this at Barnes & Noble's and I was just like, oh, a collection of short stories. This was last year that I picked this up when I was like at my all I want to read or short story collections phase of the year. And so I picked this one up, but I never got around to it. And so I finally picked it up this year. And this was a good, not great experience for me. This is one of those short story collections where the short stories for me varied in how well they hit. Caroline Kim herself is Korean American and so she wanted to write stories about various Korean experiences, people who are part of the Korean diaspora and things along those lines. So the time periods of these essays range significantly. Some of them are historical Korea, like you know 1200 something you know, Korea, things along those lines. Some of this takes place during the Korean War. Some of this takes place in modern United States and follows Korean Americans. So there's like varying degrees of like what she's exploring here. But I think like the common thread, besides the fact that all of the characters are of Korean descent to a certain degree, is like this idea of finding some level of happiness in unsavory or sad circumstances. You have like you're following kids who are in college and have complicated relationships with their parents. Like I said, you have people who suffered through the Korean War and you're following like children who are leaving their homes in North Korea, now North Korea, to Seoul to try to survive the Korean War. The short story that the title of this book comes from is the longest short story in here. And that one is probably the most devastating. I won't say anything about it, but it's based on like a true historical emperor. Um, in Korea and his son and it was shocking to say the least and that was probably the best short story in this collection in my opinion. I will say there were some short stories in here that just you know felt too short they, they were only like a page or two long and so for me short stories of that like don't really work very well. I always enjoy the short stories that are a little bit more developed so that way you can get to know the characters a little bit more and the stories and the situations a little bit more. So overall I rated this book a three star because some of the stories are really strong and I think worth reading but some of the stories in here are not. So this feels like a short story collection where if you're someone who enjoys like contemporary short stories, historical fiction short stories, it's worth checking out from like your library or something along those lines. But it's not a short story collection like The Secret Lives of Church Ladies or something like that where I'm just like shoving that book in everyone's hands. <laughs> So yeah, those are my quick thoughts on the rest of the books that I read in the month of January. Honestly, I feel like my 2022 reading has been going really, really well. I feel like I've been really enjoying the books that I've re been reading. I've been reading a decent amount of books and I feel like February has been continuing on with those same things and I'm very excited just, you know, to keep reading. I feel like for the first time, I feel like I've said this recently, but like I'm really excited about books. I'm really excited about booktube and all that stuff. And so yeah, I'm really excited to see what February has in store. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were on them. Or let me know if you have any questions about any of the books that I mentioned here today. Or feel free to let me know what your favorite book was that you read in January. I always love hearing those comments because I feel like there's always at least one comment of a book that I've never heard of before. And so it's always really fun when I hear about a book that I haven't heard of before that other people are excited about. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.